Greetings, everyone. Uh, this is a lecture video that's going to serve for all of Chapter 9. Um, instead of going in, into individual lessons, I just wanted to provide sort of a high-level overview of what Chapter 9 is all about, which will also be kind of an introduction into what Accounting 2 is going to be all about versus Accounting 1. Um, so let's dive in. Uh, to start off, Chapter 9 is made up of five different subsections. And you're going to be doing some different things in this lesson, but most of the ideas um, at the foundation of all of Chapter 9 and really what we're going to do in Accounting 2 still builds off of what you guys did and learned in Accounting 1. Debits and credits, different accounts, different account classifications. You're going to see journals, you're going to see ledgers, and all of that stuff too. Um, the big difference between Accounting 1 and Accounting 2 or kind of Part 1 or Part 2 of the textbook in the Cengage site that we're using is that there's a different business introduced in and starting with chapter nine and part two here. If you remember from uh, accounting one, we looked at this business called Delgado Web Services, and that was a sole proprietorship. It was a one person owned business. It was a pretty small business. You can think of it like a, um, you know, freelance or contractor business or something like that. Um, and so we had generally a chart of accounts, if you'll remember, for Delgado Web Services that looks like the one on the left here. Um, we broke it up into assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Um, and those were things that show up on our balance sheet. And then furthermore, we have revenue and expenses, which are sort of a subclassification of owner's equity, but they do show up instead on the income statement. <clears throat> Looking over on the right, we are going to be introduced to a corporation. It's actually a merchandising retail business set up as a corporation. And so that is going to look a little different than the sole proprietorship of Delgado Web Services. And so what you're going to notice is that there are still the main classifications, assets, liabilities, revenue, and expenses, just like Delgado Web Services. But because a corporation is bigger, because they have more transactions, more business activity, they have employees, they have to pay taxes a little bit differently and all of that, um, a chart of accounts for a corporation is going to look a whole lot different than one for a sole proprietorship. And so the one on the right here is our company. And we're going to be working with this company called Three Green Incorporated. Um, it was a company started by a woman who wanted to sell environmentally friendly products all in one place to consumers because she saw a need for that as she was start searching around for environmentally friendly products, all, all different sorts of stores. So she thought, why not sell them all in one store? And she was going to be based out of a physical location in a shopping mall. Um, and she is organized as a corporation. And so just one of the other big differences, as you'll kind of see, um, is the way that corporations are formed. Pretty much anybody can form a sole proprietorship. It's just kind of you. You start a business. The business and you are still pretty connected, even though there is a difference, obviously, between the business and the individual who started it or the owner of the business. Um, but a corporation is a whole lot different. It's much more formal. You actually have to obtain legal rights for the business and you have to hire lawyers and attorneys to kind of set up the corporation and it usually costs a little bit of money but once a corporation is formed it is completely separate from the individual all right so for example if uh, delgado web services ever went out of business and they owed money to different vendors or creditors or something like that michael delgado the person would be on on the hook for those things and he couldn't really just declare bankruptcy for his business or anything However, Three Green is organized as a corporation, and so if Three Green goes out of business and needs to pay creditors or vendors back, then they would be able to file for bankruptcy for the business and possibly buy themselves some time to organize and, and you know figure out a way to pay those people back, whereas the business owner herself would not be personally responsible for those debts. Um, and so it's just a little bit more of a removal. But a corporation does have the legal rights of an individual. It's treated by the government as like an individual person. All right, still owned by a person, yes, um, and still has its own accounts and, and bank accounts and, and money going through it. But it pays its employees from those bank accounts, kind of just like the Delgado Web Services would. Um, just some other different types of things that you'll see, though. Um, you'll notice that the... Um, 
the different types of accounts here in the general ledger are they have subclassifications too. So assets have subclassifications. Liabilities have subclassifications like current assets, plant assets, current liabilities, um, and stuff like that. We also notice that there is no owner's equity. That's going to be renamed as shareholder's equity because ownership in a corporation is broken up into its stockholders or shareholders. So if you've taken any investment classes or thought about investing, when you buy a stock, of a company, you're a you're a partial owner. You owe a share own a share of that company, and if you're a business, a corporation, uh, your business is owned by its shareholders completely. And yes, maybe you, the business owner or founder, own most of those shares still. But at some point, it's possible that you sell off most of those shares to earn capital so that you can expand your business. Some other things that you're going to come into contact are just different types of expenses, different types of liabilities and assets. And so our chart of accounts is just going to expand because this business is bigger and it does a whole lot more things. Delgado Web Services only provided a service for others and got paid directly for providing those services. Well, the retail company has to purchase goods to sell, has to purchase goods for its own business. And so there's a difference in how we classify those things. So you'll see some new different types of accounts called cost of goods sold is a big one. And then below that, we'll have purchases, purchases on account. Um, cash purchases and stuff like that. And so there are just going to be some differences, but the whole idea is the same with our debits and our credits and the way that we record things. There's still uh, mainly a double entry accounting system where each transaction is going to have two impacts, a debit somewhere and a credit somewhere else. And our accounting equation is still going to have to be equal at all times. Um, so it's just expanded a little bit. So keep in mind all that stuff you learned in accounting one and you should be good. Um, moving down through the chapter, I just want to continue to kind of give you some additional ideas of what you're going to kind of see here. You're also going to see, in addition to new types of accounts, you're going to see different types of journals. And so in accounting one for Delgado Web Services, we only used a general journal. And that was the one that you guys used on the review as well. It was a general journal. We recorded all of our transactions on that one single journal. However, a corporation is bigger and a bigger corporation needs more transactions or experiences more business activity. And so to increase efficiency, we're going to introduce a number of different uh, journals called special journals. And yes, we still will use the general journal, but we're going to have different journals as well, namely in chapter nine, you're going to look at a purchases journal and a cash payments journal. Later in chapter 10, you're going to look at a sales journal and a cash receipts journal. And then in chapter 11, we'll go back to looking at the types of transactions that are recorded only on the general journal. And so I also wanted to just give you a big picture of the workflow here. And that's kind of based on this slide here. And that is just for the purpose of trying to understand what it is that we're going to do with this corporation and how we're going to account for these different types of transactions. Because in addition to the different journals, the different types of accounts, we are going to have some different types of transactions as well. Again, following that same logic that we've used before, but they are going to be different types of transactions, as well as some of the other ones that you experienced back in accounting one as well. So this general journal flow and some just kind of vocab review that you guys need to be aware of is that we use journals to record all of our transactions and that could be recorded on a general journal or a special journal but they're all places that we record transactions okay the next piece is kind of like breaking down into smaller pieces once you record transactions on journals well that's just a list of a whole bunch of different types of transactions and so we have these things called general ledgers which are sub you know, places to write down account totals. So each general ledger would be made up of its own account. So we would have like an accounts payable ledger. All right. And that would be for the purpose of seeing just how much the business owes to its different vendors at any one point in time. And so we use ledgers as a way to summarize account totals because just having it spread out all over the place in journals doesn't do us much good if we need to figure out, for example, how much in supplies we have on, on hand at any one point in time, how much we've paid for insurance, uh, what is our sales for this month, for this quarter, for the year. So we keep ledgers as a way to summarize individual account totals. And again, those accounts are all those different types of accounts you see 
on the chart of accounts. And then we have one introduction here to kind of this thing called a sub ledger. And so we're breaking down into even smaller parts here as well. So if you think about the general ledger for accounts payable, exactly, or for example, uh, we also refer to accounts payable all the time as A slash P, and you'll see that right here. So we have accounts payable, and a business operating as a corporation is going to be purchasing a bunch of different things to operate their business from a bunch of different wholesalers or a whole bunch of different types of people or other, a bunch of other different types of business. So say uh, Three Green makes a habit out of selling LED efficient light bulbs. Well, in order to sell those light bulbs, they need to purchase it from a manufacturer of light bulbs. And so the manufacturer of light bulbs is going to be one of our different vendors. A vendor is just a name of somebody that we buy stuff from. And so we have general ledgers, again, to record different account totals. But if you look at our accounts payable ledger, and I'm going to switch to a different slide because this will break down the difference between general ledgers and sub ledgers is we have this book here would represent like our general ledger for accounts payable. Well, that number, 19,604 and 67 cents, is gonna be made up of a whole bunch of different totals from individual vendors. So when we start buying different things from different vendors, how do we know how much money we owe each vendor? And how do we know which ones we've paid off partly or in full at the end of every single month? That piece of information is really, really important to know. So we have these things called subledgers or subsidiary ledgers, and they're just a subledger with totals for each name of the vendor. So if we buy our light bulbs from Win Lighting, yes, we owe Win Lighting $3,480. But if we just look at the accounts payable ledger, that $3,480 is buried in this number, and it doesn't give us very much detail. So we use these things called subledgers to actually break down individual totals so that like at the end of the month, we know, hey, we owe wind lighting $3,480 and we need to pay them that full amount. And so we need to come up with the money to pay them off. And when we do, we make an entry for that as well. So my whole point in this was just to try to get you an idea of some of the different types of forms that you're going to see. And in the slides here for each section, it's going to give you a pretty good example on what to do. And the work that you're going to do on Cengage is, as usual, very closely tied to what you're going to see on these slides. But usually anything you see in yellow on these slides, at least, and in the book uh, chapter readings, they're going to be subledgers. Anything that's kind of green like this, that's going to be a general ledger. So general ledger for accounts payable. We could have one for supplies. We could have one for accounts receivable and so forth. But... These ones are uh, more specific breakdowns of these. So we're going to do a number of different activities where we're going to post amounts to a general ledger and then from the general ledger down onto this subsidiary ledger or a sub ledger as well. So just to give you a quick overview then of some of the other sections that you're going to see, um, we'll start with 9.2. And in 9.2, you guys are going to see some different types of accounts become introduced. They're going to talk about inventory and how pieces, uh, businesses measure inventory, the difference between this thing called a perpetual and a periodic inventory. And the idea with that stuff is just that uh, perpetual inventory is done every single time something is said. So a business inventory is all the stuff that you have on hand that you plan to sell. All right. So if Three Green has X amount of light bulbs, X amount of different eco-friendly cleaners, so forth and so on. That is her inventory to sell to customers. And obviously, she's going to hopefully be selling these things as she goes. And so she might have a starting inventory on hand, but then she needs to account for how much of that stuff she has sold at any one point in time. And so she is going to do an inventory. And a perpetual inventory is a way that just every time you sell something, it is accounted for automatically. It is automatized. It is computerized and in the system. But a lot of other smaller businesses use this thing called a periodic inventory, which is when you literally count the different products that you have on hand at the end of each what we call a fiscal period. And that could be at the end of the month, at the end of a quarter, or at the end of the year. And so 3Green uses a periodic inventory method to count and measure inventory. So that'll kind of be on hand for later. Some different types of accounts that you're going to be introduced to is something called, first of all, cost of goods sold and purchases. And purchases and cost of goods sold deal explicitly with the items a business buys 
that they plan to sell to customers. Because you have two general types of things that businesses would buy. And some of those would be for the business to use themselves, like cleaners that the business is going to use to clean its own products and floor or whatever, right? Display cases so that they can show off what products they sell. But then they're also going to buy from these different vendors things like light bulbs and, and eco-friendly cleaners and whatever else that they plan to sell as their retail space um, grows and as they offer more products. And so cost of goods sold and purchases deal explicitly with um, things that are meant for resell, resale. Um, you're going to be introduced to purchase orders and inventories, uh, inventory orders and stuff. Um, and again, you're going to be introduced into, especially in 9.2, this thing called a purchase journal, which is one of our new special journals. And that looks like this. And so we said the yellow things were the sub ledgers, the green ones were the general ledgers for like something like accounts payable. And this is a journal. So this is a place that we are going to record things that we purchase. And this one is typically purchases on account. So when we're not paying for something with cash, but we're paying and getting something now, and then we're going to pay for it later. Um, this would be where we are going to record transactions like that. Um, so an example transaction you might see is something like purchasing merchandise on account. Now, here we have our T accounts. We have a debit under purchases because a purchase is falls under that cost of goods sold, which falls under an expense for the business. So any expense is always a debit. So we're going to debit purchases, and then we're going to have a credit to accounts payable, which is one of our liability accounts. And a credit to a liability account increases our um, liability. So we have a debit to purchases, credit to accounts payable. Our um, accounting equation is going to be is going to be still balanced. And this is just the process for recording something like this. So this exactly is going to be like something you see in your work on the Cengage site. Um, so the process of recording these entries, even though the journal looks different, is very much the same as what you saw in accounting one. And so use the slides here as a way to help you kind of understand and process that new information. Um, moving on to 9.3. Um, 9.3 is all about a three-step process to post um, purchases uh, from a purchase journal to its different ledgers. So like the accounts payable ledger and then to a vendor ledger as well. And there's a three-step process and that's just outlined here. So first you're going to post uh, from the journal to the sub ledger. All right, which we see in yellow. Then you're going to total and rule the journal, um, the, the purchases journal at the end of each month. You're going to come up with a total there. And then you're going to post the purchase totals to the general ledgers for both purchases and accounts payable. So it's a three step process. Again, through practice, I think you guys will get a hang, uh, get a hold of this pretty quickly. 9.4 and 9.5 all deal with a different type. So it's the same as 9.3, uh, 9.2 and 9.3, which we saw a purchases journal and then posting from the purchases journal to the various ledgers. Now we're going to be introduced into a cash payments special journal. We're going to look at some of the different types of transactions that impact a cash payments journal, which looks like this. Again, it's a different type of journal, a different type of special journal when we make and pay for things with cash. Um, and then 9.5 is going to be all about posting from the cash payments journal. It's going to be about totaling and ruling the cash payments journal, proving that our debits equal our credits, and then posting to the individual ledgers as well. So some of the different types of things you are going to see in the cash payments journal, aside from the fact that this is a whole new journal, um, notice that cash payments have only a cash credit because cash payments mean that we are spending cash from the business. And anytime we spend cash, we're going to reduce cash. And the way that we reduce cash, which is an asset, is through a credit. So these things are all set up to make entries into these transactions as efficient as possible. So we don't need a cash debit because it's a cash payments journal. We're never going to have a cash receiving transaction listed on here. That's going to go somewhere else. Um, some of the different things, you're going to see two different things here, uh, one called trade discounts and one called cash discounts. And the idea behind these is that uh, True 3 Green, I'm sorry, 3 Green is going to be making purchases from manufacturers and other wholesalers. 
and they are going to sell three green products that three green is then going to turn around and sell to customers. And obviously, uh, if the manufacturer sells something to three green for $50 and three green turns around and sells it for $50, well, three green makes zero profit on that whatsoever. So we have trade discounts. And that just means if three green, who is an authorized seller of some product, buys light bulbs or something from the manufacturer when lighting of light bulbs, then three green needs to be able to buy it at a discount in order to turn around and sell it at a manufacturer's suggested retail price. Uh, so that they can make a profit on the sale of that good. And so the discount that exists between a manufacturer's price that they sell to 3Green and the price that 3Green is going to sell to its customers is called the net price. And the discount is called a trade discount. Another type of discount you might see is something called a cash discount because vendors like Wind Lighting, for example, sells light bulbs wholesale to 3Green to then turn around and sell to its customers. Well, wind lighting would like to be paid by three green for the sale of its light bulb because they're a business too, and they would like to be paid in a timely manner. And so sometimes wholesalers and vendors like wind lighting would offer a cash discount if three green pays them within a certain number of days, oftentimes 10 days or something like that. And so if we get a cash discount uh, on items, then we are going to have those uh, available to our cash discount area there. So yeah, cash discounts, um, a deduction that a vendor allows on an invoice to encourage prompt payment. And you will see areas and there'll be some transactions you'll come into. The slides talk about how to account for those, how to record those types of things into the cash payments journal. Um, and just some other things about the cash payments journal. We have different columns here. We have a general column for amounts that aren't used very often. We have an accounts payable debit. We have a purchases discount credit, and we have a cash credit. So just be aware of these different columns and areas. And through practice, you'll understand how these work. But anytime we make a transaction, again, these are getting a little bit more complicated, but the idea is still very much the same from what you saw in accounting one as well. Um, and then just to go through, I know that I'm skipping over a lot of stuff, but again, use these and we'll talk about more of uh, how to actually do these transactions in class. The last section, 9.5, is similar to kind of what you saw in 9.3. It's just how do you prove, rule the cash payments journal, and then how do you post it to its individual ledgers? And again, the reason why we do that is to keep track of individual vendor totals. So we need to know how much do we still owe a place like Wind Lighting or Bearden Chemicals, and how much have we paid them at the end of the month? Because sometimes these vendors only give us a certain number of credit uh, maybe like ten, twelve thousand dollars or something before they make us repay. And if we hit our twelve thousand dollars, they're not going to sell us any more goods until we pay them. Um, and so, keeping track of those individual numbers is extremely important for a business. And then finally, um, there's just ways to kind of prove and rule these different accounts payable and some different types of ledger accounts that we'll look at more. So that's all for this video. Like I said, it was not meant to be a super in-depth on each and how to do each one, but we still are at 29 minutes and 23 minutes and 30 seconds. So hopefully this just provides you some high-level overview of what you're going to see in this channel.